to give him a book value of 24300 all right so we're going to post that out once again to our trial balance over here we're now going from year two to year three we can see in year three we have the capital which now consists of the equity from the prior period plus the income is now the beginning capital we're assuming we earned another hundred thousand same this year it's not the same hundred thousand as last year that's what we have earned so far this year we're going to have the only expense that we're going to recognize being the depreciation so that we can see the effect of it here we can see the book value before we post this is the 85 to the 85 to so then we're going to debit depreciation expense and credit accumulated depreciation as we always do in the adjusting entry for depreciation and if we do that then we see that the accumulated depreciation goes up to 233.2 in the credit direction as we see in our table and the debit of the equipment less the credit of the accumulated depreciation gives book value 24.3 which is the same as the table and the depreciation expense then is 60,900. The effect on net income now is that we have revenue of 100,000 less the 60,900 and therefore we have an income of 39,100 in this case. Now, something to note as we go, you note that if we look at this number here, uh, obviously it is different. The accumulated depreciation is different than the depreciation. And you might be thinking, well, look, this, the journal entries that are being hit to these two accounts are exactly the same and opposite. So why is it that these are, this is not a credit of 233.2 and this is a debit of 233.2? The reason being that, remember that these accounts down here are temporary accounts, meaning they're closing out to the capital account each time. So the depreciation expense will only be the depreciation expense for the current period, and then it closes out to the equity section to the capital account in this case. The accounts up here are permanent accounts. They do not close out. So keep that in mind as we go. We're going to go on to year four. And note that in year four, we're going to have the same kind of issue that we had in the double declining balance. I'm going to calculate it the same way so that you can see the issue. And then we'll go back and uh, take a look at it again. So I'm basically going to do it the wrong way first, but the same way we did it in the prior uh, section. And then show you why it's a problem and then fix it. This only happens in, of course, the last year of this type of method. So let's do it the, the normal way first. So we're going to have the units produced in year four. And we have this seen that there's 15 two units to be produced. Then we're going to multiply that times the depreciation per unit as we have in the past, that number being 50 cents per unit. And that will give us the depreciation for year four. So we're going to post that out. Now I'm going to change the format of this number. Notice that it has a one there, but that's because the format is not the same as this format. So I'm going to go to the home tab numbers group and I'm going to uh, increase decimals so we can see that 50 cents there. So keep that in mind anytime that you type something in and it doesn't do what you think it should be doing. So now I'm in cell C80 equals the 50,200 unit, uh, units produced times the 50 cents per unit and enter that will give us the 7006 now let's put that into our table and see if we see anything wrong with this uh, number in our calculation once we look at it in the format of the table so we're going to say year four then equals this 7006 enter then we're going to calculate our book value the book value being the cost which stays the same less the accumulated depreciation which can be calculated as last year's accumulated depreciation plus the current year's depreciation expense or we could say it's the sum of the depreciation expense over the useful life of the asset being 24800 then we're going to subtract this out that equals the cost 2575 less the depreciation expense accumulated depreciation of 248 giving us a book value of 167 now is there a problem there is a problem with this 167 that problem is that it is below the salvage value, which we don't want to do. Now, once again, if there was no salvage value, this would be very apparent because if we thought the thing was just going to go to zero, we couldn't scrap it, we would just have to throw it away at that time, it would be very apparent that 
if we happen to use it for more hours than we estimated its useful life to be, then uh, if we keep on depreciating it, the thing would have a negative book value. And it just doesn't make any sense, of course, for us to have a machine on the books which is, which is worth negative 10,000 or something like that. That doesn't make any sense. So clearly we don't want to go below zero. All we can do is allocate the cost over the useful life. If we go over uh, the cost, then one of two things need to happen. We need to adjust the estimate possibly, or we just uh, estimate it down to zero, and uh, that's it. We're gonna we're not going to depreciate anymore. What we do not do is depreciate it below zero, or in this case, below the salvage value. Remember, the salvage value is what we basically think we could scrap it for. So if we still think that we could scrap it for that amount, we have to stop at that amount. And this is just the same type of problem we had with the double declining. It's just an estimated method, and therefore it's it's not a perfect method. It does do the job, however, and we need to put a plug in at the end to do what we want it to do. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this, and we'll recalculate it. I'm going to go ahead and delete this and recalculate it. And so the last one is going to be calculated a little bit differently. We can, we can think about it this way. We can have the cost of 257.5, and then we're going to sub subtract out the salvage value as we did in the initial uh, calculation being 20,000. That's how much we think it's going to scrap for. Notice it put the decimals there again. So I'm going to go ahead and remove decimals. It's in the home tab, numbers group, and now I'm going to decrease decimals like so. And then we can shrink this cell up again. A little bit wider. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and underline that. I haven't been underlining. So I'm going to go to the home tab font and underline this we could underline you know these items as well so we can see these calculations if you depending on your uh, formatting preferences and then that will equal the amount to be depreciated which we calculated up here as well so it's going to be the amount to be depreciated and so i'm going to subtract that out in c80 we're going to say that equals the 257.5 cost less the accumulated the I'm sorry the salvage value so so if we think about this if we want to leave the the books with 20,000 in them at the end of the calculation of the depreciation over the useful life then the amount that we have to depreciate over that time period is 237.5 why because 257.5 minus 237.5 will leave us with 20,000, which is what we want to happen because that's the salvage value. So now we have to think about, well, how much have we depreciated so far? So I'm going to say less accumulated depreciation to date, right, before this calculation. And we could get that from here, or I could calculate it this way. We could say it's the depreciation from your one's depreciation expense plus year two's depreciation expense plus year three's depreciation expense and we get the 233.2 it's also this number here that we calculated in our table or the sum of the depreciations this way the 233.2 calculated in that fashion so if that's the case then the difference between those two is what we still need to depreciate in order to bring us up to the 237.5, which will leave us with the 20,000 book value at the end of this whole process. So now we're going to say the depreciation, this will equal, let's say, equals depreciation year four. And that will then equal the 237.5 less minus the 233.200, giving us depreciation for year four of the two four thousand three hundred and again i could underline it home tab font group under oh, i'm not gonna do that under, we can do the underline over here because the cells already underlined that's why we can't use that one and if you want to use the double underline too this is basically the bottom line number for depreciation so you could go to the drop down and hit the double underline for these depreciations too again depending on your preference for that there's also a, an accounting uh, double underline which I actually you can see a little bit less because of once again the format of the cell with having these boxes around it 
So it's really up to you on the formatting. It'll change from place to place as you work in different places too, as to uh, what your uh, place of employment likes in terms of formatting. And then once you've been there for a while, you can change it to whatever you want. <laughs> so then we got 4,003 here, and that's gonna be our depreciation expense for year four. So then the uh, book value, gonna do that calculation. The cost will be the same, 257.5, less the accumulated depreciation being Accumulated depreciation for year three plus the depreciation expense for year four, or you could think of it as the depreciation, the sum of the depreciation over the useful life being 237.5. Then we can do the subtraction problem of equals the cost 257.5 minus the accumulated depreciation up to year four, 237.5, which will give us, we hope, this 20,000 because that's the salvage value. All right, so now let's do that last transaction in terms of the journal entry. So remember, we're now going to year three from year three to year four. We are on the books at the cost here and the accumulated depreciation giving us a book value of 24.3 before the journal entry. And we're gonna assume that we have the same amount of income that was earned in year four. And we can see that we closed out the income in the prior year to the capital account. So now we're going to post this last journal entry, a debit to the depreciation expense, 4,003, credit to accumulated depreciation, 4,003. What happens? The equipment still on the books, of course, for the cost, less the 237.5 gives us a book value of 20,000, which equals our salvage value, and it equals our worksheet over here. What happens next year? Even if we still use the equipment, we do not depreciate it. Why? because it's already at the salvage value and we believe we can scrap it for the salvage value. So if we think that the life of it is extended, then we may have to make an adjustment. Otherwise, uh, we can't depreciate it anymore be, unless it goes, unless we assume that the salvage value uh, will not be 20,000. So then we're gonna have the depreciation expense being 4,300. So we got the 100,000 being uh, the revenue less the 4,300 given us net income of 95.7. So there's our net income. In this case, you can see that it was a substantial uh, amount of a loss. It was front loaded again, a loss in the first year, then we had income, then we had a little bit more income, and then we had a lot of income in year four. And that might be expected in, in a lot of types of equipment. It might be expected that we will get a lot more use out of it in the first year's than in the last years because of the wear and tear on the equipment, which is one reason that the double declining balance is really a lot of times a valid method to use because it does uh, represent the, the usage of a machine being that it's more efficient in years one than uh, the later years of its use.